In this video, we're going to compare gravity and the electric force. The electric force is a force an object has due to its charge. Gravity is a force an object has due to its mass. If an object had no mass, it would not experience gravity. It would not, experience, would not have weight. On the other hand, if an object had no charge, no charges in it, then it would not be able to experience the electric force. So let's compare these. First of all, we've given you the source of these. What experiences it by the third law is also the source, because whether or not you always have two objects. An object with charge applies an electric force to another object that has charge. The Earth, because it has mass, applies a force to you because you have mass. Now, that's your perspective. The third law says I could look at it the other way. You, because you have mass, apply a force to gravity to the Earth because the Earth has mass. So who's the source and who's the person experiencing it depends on the point of view. This has to be to keep Newton's third law true. So electric, the source is charge. And in gravity, the source is mass. The type of force, well the electric can be both attractive, but it can also be repulsive. Gravity is different. It is only attractive. This is of interest to physicists as we try to understand and because we believe that there is at some point a single unified force. That is, all forces are actually different aspects, different personalities of a single force. In the much the same way your intelligence, your personality and such are all different aspects of you. So why would this one not have a repulsive? Why would it be different? That's of interest to us. And any theory we build has to account for that. Electric fields and gravity are both infinite in range. This actually tells us something. It turns out in modern physics this tells us that the object that provides this force, that carries this force, must be an object that has no rest mass. The photon and the electron, I'm sorry, the photon of the electric fields and the graviton of gravity are both massless particles. Strength. The electric force is very strong. I'll show you how strong later on. Gravity is in fact very weak and unless you have a very massive object like the Earth, you pretty much ignore its effect. You are actually attracted to everything in the room. To chairs, to dirt, to the window shades, to computer. But that force is very, very small and much smaller than the electric force holding you to your chair. So consequently, although you are attracted to all these things, we always ignore them in our problems. But we rarely can ignore, in most cases, the electric force if there's even a small imbalance of charge. Now, when we look at point sources for both, we find that for gravity, the source dependent goes as Q1, Q2. When we look at gravity, the universal law of gravitation in chapter 5, it's mass 1, mass 2. Well, at the space dependence, they both go as 1 over 4 pi r squared. We've found and checked this constant, this exponent it is 0 0.0000, and likewise 0, 0, 0, 0, many, many, many times. This tells us that our world is basically three dimensional. That neither the electric field nor the gravity force sees any other dimensions, so called hyperdimensions. Maybe there's six dimensions, but we only see three of them in our everyday life. Turns out that if there is, none of the forces that we know or experience here 
have ever have any effect on those. So we don't tend to believe in extra dimensions. The strength of the constant. Well, what we're looking for is these k, if you would. And that k, and we'll pull that 4 pi into it, is 9 times 10 to the 9th Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared. And over here, there was a universal gravitational constant, which also included that 4 pi. And it was 6.67 by 10 to the minus 11 Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared. Now let's take a look at that. Consider force by one Coulomb objects at one meter to force by one kilogram objects at one meter. So in other words, I'm saying if you had one Coulomb charge, huge amount of charge, at one meter, and if you wanted you could make, of course, one of these be, say, negative, so it'll make it attractive. And you compared the that attractive force to the gravitational force, where you had one kilogram, one kilogram, and this was only one meter apart. How would those two forces compare? Well, let's take the ratio. If we take the ratio of the Coulomb force to the gravitation force, then we get K, Q1, Q2, oops, Q2, over one meter squared, but that's one, that's one. And on the bottom we have G M1 M2 over R squared, which is one. So that's all one, that's one, that's one. We'd get K over G. So nine times 10 to the nine divided 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. Well, let's see, that says that K over G, and I'm going to ignore the units for a minute here, is 9 divided by 6.67 times 10 to the 20. So the electric force is t more than 20 orders of magnitude greater than the gravitational force. So you have to have a huge object, a huge M down here, in order to get this force to be big, like the mass of the Earth, in which case the mass of the Earth can pull down a building even though electric fields and the pivots and such are trying to hold it up. But for regular things in chemistry and such, you notice they never seem to worry about the gravitational forces between the protons and the electrons. They only care about electricity. And that's because this fact that this force is so much bigger, more than 20 orders of magnitude bigger. All right, that finishes it for this video.